Training value, training value should be, uh, should, you should have medical uh, personnel on site. The data analysis has been done by different parameters as accreditation, day value, and diagnosis. And you can see here, we had a little bit than 12,000 medical encounters, no, 20, 22,000 medical encounters uh, all together. And you can see on this, uh, on this chart that the major number was at the first, at the middle of the games, uh, which was the first weekend, which is always the, the busiest one. Um, the medical encounter per accreditation, you can see that the workforce always represents the, 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 the highest number because in Beijing we have about 75,000 volunteers. So you understand that it's a large city with medical encounters and we have to take care of them. And the athletes can start in second. Medical encounters, so by venue, of course, number one was the national stadium and then the other venue. Medical encounters per diagnosis, number one was muscular skeleton, because athletes and even workforce, they had accidents. And number two, it is something quite interesting, number one is always muscular skeleton, and number two is dental, because we have found that the athlete's dental health was very, very bad. And therefore, many athletes take the opportunity of the game to have some treatment at the polyclinic. The key success for good medical organization, good team, good people, right time, right place, right person. Good cooperation with government, good cooperation with other functions, and good plan, and good daily report. You can see here some slide where the medical, uh, medical are not so easy sometimes in white water, at the cross, at the mountain, at the BMX. Sometimes it's quieter, like that, you know, for soccer of uh, field hockey. Sometimes it's nice, you're on the water and you can see the, the, the nice uh, competition. You have also massage, which is very well known in China. Not this one, but uh, you have also foot massage. And we have the polyclinic, for those who have been in Beijing, the polyclinic of the village is a real, real hospital. You can see here all the departments which have been uh, prepared by our Chinese colleagues. And you can see that the real hospital. This is the polyclinic inside of the Olympic Village. With dental, and you can see here what we have done. We have done a lot in dental, and as I told you, many, many athletes take care, take advantage of the, of the, of the Olympic Games to have a dental review and treatment. We have ENT, pharmacy, laboratory. I told you, it's a real, real hospital, and for zoos, who will be part of Olympic Games, as Sophia, you know, Sophia, you know in Abbeville and in Sisi, we have also a polyclinic, and uh, people were mostly friendly for that. Ophthalmology Vision Center, we had a, at this time a partner with Johnson & Johnson who have installed a major vision center for the athlete to be, uh, to be monitored and to have also some uh, glasses. We have to stop also, as you can see on this slide, we have to stop the distribution of glasses. Because everyone wanted to have free glasses. I have one here, you know, this was the free glasses. You know, these glasses have been provided. But at the end, we found that more workforce than athletes wanted to have glasses. So we have to limit a bit the, uh, the distribution of glasses. We have a huge radiology and uh, psychology. That is an important also. We had a, hu we had a, 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 a joint program with UNAID for HIV AIDS awareness. And, uh, excuse me ladies, we have two phases during this game. The first one is, we didn't thought that we have two women who had deliveries. We have two babies who were born at the venue, and we didn't expect that. And the second phase, I'm sorry ladies, and as you know, at the all, at all the game, we have distribution of condoms in this campaign against uh, HIV AIDS. And we had one complaint, because we didn't talk about that, we have only one size. And we had some complaint from some country. So now, for those who will have to organize game, and if you have to distribute condoms, which is important for campaign, think about that different sizes.
Okay, having said that, we have nutrition here, also, and the health and the that is very important. All the equipment required for the game has been all are about to be dispatched in several hospitals, both in Beijing and in the country. That is very important. All the equipment we have seen have been distributed to all the hospitals. And this represents a major step in the modernization of the sector of health in China. We have also a huge public health campaign and connection. Don't look at this slide, it's very complicated. That we have the public health surveillance for, for communicable disease and the case of the allowed different departments which were working in the past in silos to learn how to work together. That is a major problem, you know. And in any kind of organization, when you look at an organization at the beginning, you work in silos, which is worst thing which may happen. And now we have to work together. Of course, you've all heard about the pollution, potential pollution in Beijing. This was also a critical thing, and that's been, uh, we have been criticized to choose Beijing because of what they call pollution. You will see, they have done a huge and a major improvement by many, many, uh, I would say, measures which have been taken, like traffic regulation, they have changed the factory, they have changed the structure of the uh, manufacturer that I told you. And we have been very, very happy that at the end, you have in this slide the comparison on the right between the same day in 2007 and 2008. And you can see that in 2008 we have more than 11 days with a perfect air quality and some others where the air quality was also good, which was not the case but in 2007. And I can tell you that some very, very important athletes who have been very critical about the pollution, you know, say and publicly apologize after the game and they say, I regret not to have come to Beijing because I was told that the air quality was even, even better than in major Western countries. We have, um, of course, we have some luck, and as you can say, the Mongolian gods were probably disposed with us. We didn't have any wind coming from the Gobi Desert. The air quality is probably one of the fields where the negative would be the most important and visible, and the game has proved that with current measures, Beijing is to be considered at the same level as all the major cities in the world. We had also a huge program on protection of food. You know, Beijing has been said we have contaminated food, the food is not controlled, the quality is not good. I can tell you we never had a problem in Beijing at the time of the game because the public authority take all the measures to control the food and the the traceability of the food which has been used in all the restaurants and in all the uh, different uh, uh, places where the assets were. Water control also, all the reservoirs have been checked, renewed, the pipes have been renewed also. We have some little, some little health issue, very few the communicable disease. Okay, no, you go the other way. No? Okay. Health legacy, strict monitoring implemented by the IOC regarding the, for the athlete the use of some substances and we have succeeded also by diminishing the use of substances. We have done a huge injury prevention study program and you remember the issue of the poor uh, Japanese swimmer who had a problem of it, we showed that with the inset of the TV. We had that uh, problem with the rowing also and the marathon swimming and uh, if we go here, you can have the breakdown of the different injury. Once more, if you want this slide, you just ask the organizing committee and you can use them as you like. Here are the different sports by uh, high risk. You can see that they go the weightlifting, boxing, and team sports, soccer, hockey, and handball. Health Legacy Touch program will help us for changing the training method, changing the equipment, changing the field of play injury, and changing the rules if necessary. Very briefly now on doping program. Doping, unfortunately, exists also. We had about nine cases in Beijing. We have 41 stations, 34 in Beijing, 7 in remote city. 1,000 persons working, not 1,000 in the photo. My camera was not large enough. You know? <laughs> so, 1,000 doping control staff. 
Total tests we have done a little bit less, uh, uh, less than 5,000 tests, 132 records plus additional testing. We have done testing pre and post competition during the period of the game, which start at the opening of the village up to the closing ceremony. We have collected about 400 liters of urine, which is quite a lot, I can tell you. And all the samples now after the game have been repatriated to laboratory in Lausanne, where we are doing now some further analysis because we have some new development of new methods. So maybe we may have some new positives. And sample, you know, the Chinese have done a very good uh, technique, you know, we have armed forces, we took care of the, of the sample, it was very impressive to see these little bottles of urine with armed forces around. That is worth it. The Beijing lab, we have a brand new lab, that is also a new legacy, with many people coming from different uh, worldwide laboratories, accredited by the water. Positive case, you have nine, so far nine positive case, I, I, I just want to tell you that these games in Beijing have been fantastic games. And these games in Beijing, and all the other games, as these mass gatherings, as these universities are here, help us to disseminate what we call the Olympic value. Olympic value are three main values. First, friendship. You saw that. Second, respect. We have to respect our colleagues, we have to respect the public, we have to respect the official, and third, excellence. The athlete, and Sophia you here, the athlete know they are striving for excellence. Excellence is one of the main Olympic values, and that's why Olympic Games on one hand, second, the Youth Olympic Games, where the value had to be teach to the young people, and Claude Rigania this morning said the Youth Olympic Games should not be gold medal digging. We need to, we need to use this Youth Olympic Games to disseminate the three values which I repeat, friendship, respect and excellence. And I'm sure also this, will, this university art will, will start on the 18 or 14, 15, 15, uh, 16, I don't know exactly. I'm sure this university art, winter and summer, also help the sport movement, the Olympic movement, to disseminate this value. I can tell you, Beijing were great, and xie xie China. If we do not have any positive, the people will say, your, your program was useless. If we have too many positives, the people will say, your education is useless. You know, so, um, so, I think what we have done in Beijing, we have done a bit less than 5,000 tests. We have so far 9 positives, plus uh, 5 horses. Unfortunately, the horses come and defend themselves. So we have, because I don't speak horses very well for the moment. You know. And uh, so, 9 plus 5 horses. We may have some new positive with a new method, which will come now. But I can tell you also that the National Olympic Committee and the Federation, International Federation did a fantastic work at the request of our president prior to the Games. Because if you remember well, 39 athletes have been barred to compete at the Games because they have been found positive before the Games. And if the Federation and if the National Olympic Committee didn't do such a good job, these 39 athletes will have been participated at the game and will have been found positive. So, my answer is yes, the game in Beijing were great games because first, the anti-doping program put in place by the IOC and the Chinese authority has been a good program. Second, because the International Federation and National Olympic Committee did a great job. And third, because the athlete follow very well the recommendation.